Hey, this video is brought to you today by my friends at Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. Element was formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following keto, low carb, or paleo diets. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium per packet. The perfect ratio I have found for me. What I love the most is that there's no junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. As a member of our community, Element has a very special offer for you. You can claim your free Element sample pack simply by going over to the website, drinkelement.com forward slash Marcus Philly to get yours. And if you're wondering what my favorite flavor is, raspberry salt mixed with some ice water is delicious. I hope you enjoy. Steroids, have I used them? And now, spoiler alert. The answer to the question I posed, steroids, have I taken them? Well, the answer is no, but I can actually see why people would think so. See, first off, there were the years when I did CrossFit as a competitive athlete. Now, both from a performance standpoint and aesthetically, I was able to do some things that many people had never seen athletes do. Must be the drugs, right? But in reality, I was training 25 hours a week at a world-class level in a sport that was super gnarly, really hard, and I was eating and recovering like a pro. Then there was 2020, pandemic year. That year, I surfaced a ton of media during the pandemic that was striking to many people. I was tan, I was lean, I was training in my backyard, it looked beautiful. I was looking jacked and vascular on a daily basis. I mean, I was pretty ripped for like 10 months straight and people caught notice and many people gonna call me out for using steroids. But let's break that down a bit. See, I was leading a very simple regimented life, which many of you were too. We couldn't go outside, we couldn't really socialize, we couldn't do anything. I already had a lot of muscle mass from all my years kicking ass in CrossFit, plus 10 years of training pre-CrossFit, and then on top of that, here I was leaning out, getting tan daily in my backyard, controlling my diet pretty damn strictly without much else to do but being locked down. I was practicing intermittent fasting daily for a year, I was cycling my carbs to optimize leanness, and I really prioritized that. Simply my vascularity and muscle mass on top of the ability to still perform well made people that don't know me assume I was on performance enhancing drugs. And unfortunately, those people that just tuned in in 2020, they missed the 18 years of dedication prior to that. So yeah, I get it. I understand why some people can assume that. But let's get back to the topic of today. I made a video a couple weeks back about my personal body transformation from being a competitive CrossFit athlete and then being a dad of two daughters and a business owner today. You can go check it out right up here. And in that video, I talked about why I lost muscle mass and also body fat along the way. It was about eight pounds over the course of five or six years of not competing. Nowhere in the video did I mention PEDs. Since that was never really a part of my journey, I didn't think to mention it. But in hindsight, I see that there are a large number of people who saw that video and were ruffled that I didn't mention it. Their assumption was that the reason I lost muscle mass after competing was because I got off my cycle of steroids and now I wasn't using them anymore. Therefore, I figure I might as well address it now and probably should have made a mention of it in the last video. My mistake. But quite honestly, my brain just doesn't work that way and I rarely think about it. Now, to begin with, I will admit, there are without question people in the sport of CrossFit that use and have used performance enhancing drugs and steroids. And with that said, I'm confident still that many of the top athletes in the sport 
are not using PEDs and never have. And why do I have full confidence with this? Well, I'm gonna talk about my personal experience. Number one, I trained clean for 12 years before I ever started to compete in the sport of CrossFit. I did extreme bodybuilding programs and diets and saw exactly what my body was capable of doing just that. Then, number two, I spent seven years in the sport of fitness at the highest level, meaning I qualified and competed in the CrossFit Games six out of seven years with some training leading up to that, and this is what I saw. After seven years of competing clean, I saw my body transform in incredible ways. My body's performance improved slowly and steadily for all seven years, and I slowly and steadily built muscle mass. For all seven years that I was competing in the sport, I was also mentored by some of the smartest coaches in fitness. I was also dedicated to my personal craft of coaching, which included understanding the intersection between physiology, intensity, overload, and diet, and many other factors. And when I look at my experience in the sport, as well as that of the other athletes I competed with and against, I can see clear explanations physiologically how this sport can create freak bodies that you see and freak performances that are becoming the norm in the sport of fitness. Okay, I read all the comments. I know more are gonna come. I'm happy to engage in conversations about this topic. But before you go and drop a steroid accusation comment, please just watch the full video and at least hear me out. Then, by all means, drop the steroid comments below. If anything, I think it'll just help out with the algorithms. Heck, while you're at it, smash that like button. Subscribe too. It all helps us reach more people. Okay, the five reasons why CrossFit builds crazy bodies when you compete at the highest level. Number one, intensity. You cannot build great physique without some intensity. How much do you need? Well, it all depends. The more you get, the more you need to be capable of recovering from it, the more resilient you need to be with more intensity. I will tell you that CrossFit is one of the most potent and intense sports I've ever encountered as an athlete and as a coach. There is no shortage of intensity. So here is where genetics play in. Only the most resilient athletes survive the CrossFit game. The top percentage only. Those that have the best types of genetics and the best discipline are capable of reaping all of the benefits of this intensity. So when you see the crazy physiques out there, know that these are the top percent of a percent that have been resilient enough to handle the sport. So when you see these high-level CrossFit athletes, it means they are the very few that haven't been chewed up and spit out of the intensity tornado that is CrossFit sport. Okay, point number two is eccentric demand. The volume of CrossFit is crazy. I mean, have you ever actually seen what the volume of a training program that these athletes go through looks like? It's pretty nuts. More reps, more, more sets, more time under tension than any, or at least most of the physique athletes that I've ever seen out there. <laughs> Additionally, the speed is crazy. On top of the volume of these reps and the loads, these things are happening fast and heavy. This amount of added speed in movements like kipping pull-ups and dips and muscle-ups, the rate at which people squat in the sport, all of that places a tremendous eccentric demand on muscles. Eccentric contractions are where we break down muscle tissue. So this forced breakdown then leads to muscle repair and growth constantly, week after week in the sport. Heck, even the cardio and aerobic work that you see in CrossFit involves eccentric contractions. I mean, I hear people saying, you can't do that much cardio in CrossFit and build muscle without drugs. But what they fail to recognize is that the style of cardio that we used in CrossFit is actually has tons of loading and tons of eccentric demand too. 
So that means that you're increasing the volume of contractions doing cardio, which leads to more muscle breakdown. And with resilient people on adequate rest and nutrition, that is an equation for muscle growth. Okay, number three. CrossFit sport requires massive commitment to get to the top. And I'm talking years and years of it. Ever wonder why you don't have the body of your dreams? Oh, you've been training for two years? Oh, four years? Even six years? Keep on going. Go ahead, log 10 years of consistent, hard training, and then consider continuing on. See, most CrossFit elite athletes have been in the sport for five plus years. And with anywhere from five to 10 years of training under their belt before ever stepping foot into a CrossFit event. That was my story and a similar story to many people that I competed against and with. That's 10 years of lifting in gyms, then CrossFit for another five to 10 years competitively. And only at that point, 15 to 20 years later, did somebody start saying, hey, Marcus, you look like you're on steroids. It's easy to think, hey, that person cheated or that person is enhanced. It's hard in the age of social media to go beyond the past five years when you could see everything that was happening and really see what the last 20 years of my training or my competitors training looked like. Dedication over a long time and consistency over that long time with intensity, with eccentric demand leads to very, very striking bodies. Okay, point number four. Elite recovery and elite nutrition are synonymous with successful CrossFit athletes. I know so many people that train hard enough to have the bodies of their dreams. The issue is that they don't eat correctly or recover correctly to actually get there. Successful CrossFit athletes are incredibly regimented with their diet and recovery protocols. And those that do the best in those areas tend to win the most and also have the most impressive physiques. The best athletes in this sport are doing world-class recovery and nutrition alongside world-class training. All right, my fifth and final point is about strength to body weight ratios. Remember, CrossFit doesn't just demand being strong, but it also demands that you can run, do cardio, and gymnastics too. When you play a sport that requires you to be strong, but also run well, have great endurance, do body weight movements fast and efficiently, you start to get a recipe for someone that would perform optimally if they were strong and lean. See, CrossFitters need to be strong with a relatively low body weight, and the best way to get there is with more muscle and less body fat. I truly believe this, and you can see it in other sports, that the ideal body for a sport will start to surface over time as more and more people chase elite performance. It's why every swimmer that lines up for the freestyle at the Olympics looks pretty much the same. It's why you look at a strongman competition and all the competitors have a pretty much similar build. Well, maybe CrossFitters just won the aesthetic lottery since the sport itself seems to favor a body that looks like this in order to achieve its highest performance. Hey, I hope you're still following me to this point. All those reasons that I just mentioned when combined are without a doubt supportive of building freakish bodies that many would argue are on drugs. You might even be tempted now to see if you can go and replicate that for yourself. But let me talk to you about the reasons why CrossFit sport like this isn't for you. Number one, spirit crushing. If you think giving up sweets for a month is hard, then getting into CrossFit sport will absolutely test your will more than you can imagine. The number of times that I train tired, sore, skip social outings, skip family events, missed vacations, and went to bed early is beyond anything I could count. You have to be disciplined beyond belief. And even then, it is no guarantee that you'll have all the other required qualities to succeed. Also, don't discount the discomfort of the actual training. There just never seemed to be an easy day. And I never, never felt it get easier, only harder the more fit you get. Reason number two this might not be your best approach you don't have enough time. See, you might think that getting in three to four hours of workouts a day sounds like a dream. And if you could really organize your life schedule, you could make it happen. 
But the time commitment in order to reap the benefits of this sport require hours beyond the gym. Sleep, recovery, nutrition, mental preparation take massive, massive amounts of time investment. Okay, reason number three. Remember when I talked about being genetically resilient enough? There's a good chance that you're not in that category. Seven years of CrossFit helped transform my body into what it is today. But I've lost count of the number of injuries and setbacks I've had along the way. Some were minor and others felt major to me. I believe that in the face of some of these obstacles that I have encountered, most sane and rational people would just pack it in and say, I quit. I mean, I certainly had many moments of wanting to quit myself along the way. Most people that take this approach, this CrossFit sport approach to trying to build a very aesthetically pleasing body, they likely just get burned out and they end up injuring themselves at some point along the way. And unless you have deep commitment, you will go searching for another option. Okay, number four, your passion to improve your performance isn't great enough. See, you might be here to try and build the body of your dream, and you might be thinking, I wanna look like that, but most of us that did well in CrossFit didn't care much about physique during our time competing. What we deeply cared about was to be the best athletes that we could be inside the sport. We sought out weaknesses, we trained them with intense resolve. Technique sessions could last hours and were not uncommon. All to simply improve our skill, our position, our efficiency, and ultimately move just a little faster for a little bit longer. So if you're solely chasing physique, then the effort and dedication to things that are seemingly totally unrelated, it's gonna end up getting to you. Why am I drilling my snatch technique for 60 minutes? What does this have to do with building muscle? The reality is that those skilled contractions gave us competitors the ability to push those same movements and lifts at tremendous intensity under fatigue and ultimately down the road reap the benefits of the bodybuilding characteristics of CrossFit. So it was a byproduct of the pursuit of elite performance that gave many of us access to that. What I do find interesting is that this is the exact same thing that happens in the case of an elite running back and because the road is super tough if you don't love it and you aren't ready to put in 20 years of your life. Now, to build a head turning physique, you do not need to use steroids or PEDs. I'm sure they can help, but what you really need is wild dedication. I know there are people watching who may be saying to themselves that they have crazy dedication but still haven't built that head-turning physique. Now for those of you in this boat, I have some honest and possibly hard feedback to take in. Number one, you might need to keep doing what you're doing, highly dedicated, for a lot longer. Number two, you actually might need to get on a better training program, diet, or lifestyle to combine with your passion and dedication. And finally, number three, you might need to be a little bit more honest with yourself and really evaluate how dedicated you are and how much you really want that head-turning physique. Look, everyone is not destined to build that kind of body, nor should we all aspire to have sub 10% body fat along with enough muscle on our bodies to be categorically jacked. And once again, if you're still with me and haven't turned off the show today, then let's dig into what you can do to build the body of your dreams. I mean. What can we learn from all this CrossFit sport talk? If elite CrossFit sport isn't likely to be the best path for you to take you to the dream body, then what should you do? Can you learn anything from CrossFit sport and apply it to a more sensible approach? Well, fortunately, I've been building training approaches and programs for the past six years that combine the best of what I learned from my CrossFit sport years, along with age-old training concepts and strength and conditioning, as well as bodybuilding principles and I've turned them into a unique approach to building athletic and aesthetic bodies that display both physique and performance. It's called functional bodybuilding. My goal has been to take the best attributes from CrossFit training that I've done for decades and combine them with time-tested classic fitness principles in a single program. We'll provide you with a 60 to 90 minute training session four to five days a week to help you experience the benefits of what CrossFit has to offer for performance and aesthetics but also balance training enough so that you can overcome the obstacles that I've mentioned already in this video. We thoughtfully incorporate eccentric loading 
and controlling intensity for our clients. So if the hallmark of CrossFit sport is maximal intensity, then functional bodybuilding is all about thoughtfully dosing that intensity so you don't burn out. We also turn about all of our cardio into aerobic bodybuilding. We give clients the benefits of doing mixed modal conditioning in their daily workouts by combining aerobic zone training with smart eccentric contractions. I like to think of this style of conditioning as hypertrophy training with an aerobic twist. It's perfect for those wanting to build strong, healthy, and sexy bodies without the breakdown and burnout. With functional bodybuilding, we make sure to explore a wide variety of movement patterns, planes, ranges of motion, in order to keep your joints healthy, balanced, and strong. See, by bulletproofing you year round, as we train, we keep you in the game longer. Lastly, for functional bodybuilding, consistency is king, not intensity. We need you to be consistent above all else. And CrossFit sport has a tendency to burn people out, so we put a lot of energy into making sure you can do this for a long time. So that's a wrap on today's video. A reminder to go hit the like button if you got something valuable from this video. Drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts on this matter of steroid use. And if you wanna keep up with what we're doing on a weekly basis, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for your time. I know it's precious and I'm always grateful that you shared it with me. See you next time.